water. Hello, Porter. Can you tell me how much longer for the train to Bramblehurst? One hour, 20 minutes, ma'am. Thank you. Spell things or two for a veteran. A veteran of what? Life, madam. Every day. Will two pence afford you a bath? Yeah, now, Marvel. How many times have I told you no pad handling the passengers on the platform? Oh, just trying to get... Oh, well, I know what you're doing. Now move along. Oh, it's a free country. And I can do... No, no, whatever. not here you can't. The notice over there says no soliciting. And you're soliciting everyone you can. You'll have to leave. And I don't want to see you back unless there's a ticket out of Ibing in your fat little hat. No. Now, why don't you do us both a favor? Go on back to Halls and knock back a pint. Here. Is that the only you can touch loose with? No. It's a beast of a country. Right? And pigs. Who's the people? Where did you come from? I, I must be oh, don't be alarmed. You are not drunk. You'll be alarmed in a minute, you fool. Where are you? Let me get my mark on you, on you. Are you buried? Oh, keep your nerves steady. Ow! Who did that? I could have sworn I heard the voice. Of course you did, you peewit. Peewit? Indeed. Ow! Let go of my cow. Hey, you think I'm just an imagination, eh? <laughs> just an imagination? Who else can you be? Very man? well, I'm going to throw rocks at you. Do you think differently? Ow! Now, <laughs> am I an imagination? I must be off my rocker. You struggle anymore? Oh, throw this flint. I don't let your head. I don't understand it. Stones flinging themselves, stones talking. I'm done. No, oh, it's very simple. Look, I'm an invisible man. Tell me something I don't know. What would that all? I'm invisible. That's what I want you to understand. But how are you? I'm invisible. Well, that's the great point. And what I want you to understand is this. Uh, we're not. I'm over here. Oh. Six yards in front of you. Oh, come on, I'm not blind. You'll be telling me next to you're just there. Yes, I am. There. You're looking right through me. Ain't there any stuff to you? Oh, I am just a human being. Solid. Needing food and drink. Now, I'm needing some covering, too, but I'm invisible, see? Invisible! Oh, simple idea. I'm invisible. Uh, let me have you have the... Uh, I'll be there. If that don't be... You have been eating bread and cheese. Yes, you're right not quite assimilated into my system. Sort of ghastly. Oh, all oh, this isn't as wonderful as you might think. Uh, I can think of a lot of things I do uh, being invisible. And that is why I picked you. Picked me? But what I want to say is this. I need help. I have come to that. Came upon you suddenly, I was wondering, mad with rage, naked, impotent. I have been murdered. I've done murder. And I saw you. Lord. Yes, I saw you. You were an outcast, just like myself. This was my only chance. So look, I followed you out of the station and came after you. What? Kill me? No, I, I want you to help me get clothes. And then other things. I left them long enough. If you won't, well. Why? I'll help do what you say. Let me go. Help me. And I will do great things for you. An invisible man is a man of power. <coughs> Why, why? But if you betray me, if you fail to do as I direct... I won't betray you. Well, 
we'll see how truthful that remark is. Now back in town, there's a bed sort of a tavern. It's overrun with rustic dandies and overly smart wenches. Aye, the horse and carriage, I know the place. Good. In the upstairs parlor, there's a portman too by the desk with a selection of journals and handwritten notes. Get them. My checkbook and the overcoat too. And then whatever bundle of clothes that you can muster. Making off with all that won't be easy. Where do I, I meet you? Meet me? Why, I'll be three steps behind you. So don't try giving me the snip. Oh. Come on, hurry it on. We need to be back here in one hour. Okay, 
Let me out. I'll stand in the aisle so he doesn't climb over us. Pleasant day. Very. Seasonable weather for this time of year. Quiet. Ah, so where are you off to? My lord. I got a nephew living in Port Stowe. Thought I'd drop in on him and his wife before shipping out. No books! Oh, uh, <clears throat> yes, uh, yes, they're, they're books. Now there's something extraordinary about books. Right. And some extraordinary things outside of them. True. And there's some extraordinary things in newspapers, for example. Yeah. In this newspaper, uh. there's a story about an invisible man, for instance. Right. What will they be writing about? Uh, where, Australia or America? Neither. Here. Really? Ah, when I say here, now I don't, I don't, of course, mean here in this place. I mean, I mean here about. An invisible man. Uh, what's he been up to? Everything. Every blessed thing. I haven't seen the paper in four days. I think it's the place he started at. Oh, you don't mean here. And where he came from, nobody don't seem to know. Ah, uh, here it is. Peculiar story from Iping. And it says in this paper that the evidence is extraordinary. Strong. Extraordinary. Lord. But then it's an extraordinary story. There is a clergyman and a medical gent. Witnesses saw him all. All these ways did not see him. He was staying at the coach and horses and no one knew of his affliction until the bandages were torn off. Yes, the paper says attempts were at once made to secure him, but casting off his garments, he succeeded in escaping, but not until after a desperate struggle in which he had inflicted serious injuries on Constable J. A. Jaffers, murdering coppersmith Craig Huckster. Pretty straight story, eh? Names and everything. Sounds astonishing. Don't it? Extraordinary, I call it. Never heard tell of an invisible man before, but nowadays we hear a lot of. Uh, Extraordinary thing. But don't say he had any pals, does it? No, no, thank heaven. It doesn't. Makes me uncomfortable, thought of that chap running about the country. He's got a tremendous advantage. You know what? You're right. The fact he has. Yeah, well, the fact is, I, I happen to know a thing or two about this invisible man of private sources. Oh, you? Yeah. And may I ask... You'd be astonished. It's tremendous. No, I can imagine. Right. The fact is... Ow! Mm. What's wrong? Nothing. Mm. Oh, what? Convince him it's a hoax. It's, it, <clears throat> it's a hoax. But, but it's in the paper. Oh, it's all the same. I, I, I know the barkeeper. Uh, uh, that started the lie. Uh, there ain't no invisible man whatsoever. Well, well, how about this paper? Did you mean to say? Not to word of it. Now, now, wait a bit. Then why did you let me go on telling you all this stuff? What do you mean letting a man make a fool out of himself like that for? Well, now, I've been talking here these ten minutes, and you, you little pot-bellied old boot, you couldn't have had the elementary manners. No come banding words banding with me. Banding words? Well, I've got a good mind. Come on up. Hey, what? Come on, you better be moving along. Well, now, who's moving along? Now, what is this? Now, let go of my oh, arm. Oh, he's going to throw him off the train. Hey, what? He's going to, what, no. No, stop this! No, somebody hold the train! No! Here's no, your no. stop! Ah! Good boy! <laughs> These trains, oh, they're full of extra ordinary types asses. Now, what were you proposing with those remarks, Marvel? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. No, I don't believe it. I swear, I was just... I told you I would kill you if you betrayed me. Mm. Oh, and you did betray me. No, 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 no. It was my little conversation. I, I didn't mean anything by it. As soon as the train stops in Burdock and the passengers begin to step off, well, I will kill you. I gave you my word, and I keep my word. I will relish in my sting. Do not scream or call out. Utter one sound, and 
I promise something more grisly than anything your paleolithic brain can marshal. Oh, my word is my bond. 